This next book is kind of triggering to me. I read a book in a series that made me decide to completely DNF the whole series and to not continue on with it. <laughs> Ooh, talking about a book that's not worth anyone's time, here I have Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. We are already a third of the way through 2022, which sounds just like mind blowing to me. And I still haven't done a wrap up of all the 13 books that I have read until so far in 2022. Honestly, by this time, I would have expected to have read less books than I have until so far. So I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I've had very mixed opinions and experiences with all these books. So I'm curious to share with you all my very mixed opinions as per usual. <laughs> but first a word from today's sponsor, Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a super fast growing online bookish service, which is perfect for every single reader out there. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and to help readers discover new books that they will love. But how does their service work, Sabine? Well, their team vets hundreds of different books each month and they make a curated selection from books that you can choose from. They have even expanded the amount of books that they will feature on their website every single month. It used to be five, but it can get up to seven books each month that you can choose from. Book of the month is a risk-free surface. If you don't like any of the picks, that's fine. You can skip a month, you will not get charged, or you can choose some of their other options from previous months. Or if you like to get more books, that is also possible. They have an add-on feature too. Unfortunately for my international followers, book of the month only ships to US addresses. They do not offer international shipping. They do have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. And if you use my code Sabine, you can get your first book of the month book for just $9.99, which is a great, great deal. Let me show you their main picks and my personal favorites. We have the thriller Breathless by Amy McCulloch, Peter Pan inspired fantasy Darling Girl by Liz Mikalski, historical fiction Take My Hand by Dolan Perkis Valdez, and I think one that you guys will really be excited for is Yerba Buena by Nina LaCour, and this is her, I think, adult debut. My three personal favorites of this month are The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. This is a gothic horror, I believe, and perfect for fans of Mexican gothic. Add-on book, Book of Night by Holly Black. When I got this in my box, I was like, thank the Lord, because I have seen so many of my booktube bookish friends get review copies of this fantasy, and I am beyond curious to read Holly Black's first adult fantasy. And then last but definitely not least, we have their romance pick for May and it looks so cute. This is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. It's like a small town romance, which sounds absolutely perfect. And I've definitely become more of a romance reader in the past couple of months. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. It is definitely because of them and some of my other sponsors that I'm able to create these bookish videos for you guys. Don't forget to use my code Sabine to get your first Book of the Month book for just $9.99. A link is in my description definitely go check it out and now let's go on to the 13 books that I read until so far. The first book that I finished in 2022 is What's a Girl Gotta Do by Holly Bourne. Holly Bourne is one of like those UK contemporary authors that I don't think enough people know about. I think she's fairly well known in the UK, but she needs more attention, okay? And she's coming to Yelk, which is the young adult literature convention, which is happening in London at the beginning of July. And I'm going to that. I'm gonna hopefully meet her and get my books signed. This is the third and final book in the Spinster Club trilogy, which is like a companion novel trilogy about these three friends who create like a feminist friend group discussion group. And in this one, we follow Lottie and she's actually like a blogger. She makes videos on YouTube. And in this book, she is gonna make videos and gonna expose her school and every single thing that's kind of like hate towards women. She's gonna point that out and make that in like a documentary style type of video. And it's all about her doing that and the effect on someone's mental health on that. And I thought that this was a really strong conclusion to the theory, theory to the trilogy. My scientific paper brain is still activated. Let's shut it down, please. <laughs> still my favorite of this trilogy is the first one, which I have right here. Am I normal yet? And in this one, we follow Evie who has OCD and is kind of like just coming back from recovery, but things aren't going that great again. They're super addictive. I also feel like they're really quite realistic and Holly Board definitely shines a light on the mental struggles that also teens have to go through. I think I gave What's a Girl Gotta Do four out of five stars. 
I finished my first book of 2022 on the 25th of January and that was because I was also currently reading a different book which is called Onyx and Ivory by Mindy Arnett. This was a book that I received in a fairy loot box years and years ago and I was in this kind of like weird phase of trying to unhaul books that I just didn't have any interest for anymore but this one still sounded nice. Ugh, this book was so slow. It was so so slow and I don't even fully remember what it was about anymore. It is a dual point of story, a YA fantasy which I have not read in a super long time so it was kind of like unlike me to pick this one up. We have Kate and her nickname in this like world is Traitor Kate because her father tried to assassinate the High King a couple of years ago. She's now part of the Relay and the Relay is actually kind of the surface that takes the post from castle to castle because in this country at night dragons come out and just like destroy basically everything and everyone that they meet. So I was so excited. I really wanted to read a dragon fantasy. It just sounded so cool and this one seemed really dark and just I like the vibes that I was getting from this one. She also has some secret magic but she is supposed to work together with this guy called Corwin Tremaine. He is the High King's second son and apparently Kate and Corwin have kind of a complicated history. Corwin is kind of like looking on the countryside what are all of these like dragon attacks and they kind of have to work together. The plot was really quite vague. It was super super slow. At the beginning I was still quite hopeful because it felt like we were mostly just getting dark vibes from this world but the writing was super slow. I just could not get through it and I've decided for myself that in 2022 if I don't feel like a book is doing it for me just DNF it girl so that's what I did with this one. I think like it wasn't too bad this book. It just was not for me so I gave it I think a two and a half to a 2.75 out of 5 stars and I will not be continuing on with this duology <laughs> that's for sure. I am so silly because I put my social psychology book on Goodreads too because I was like I'm gonna read this damn book for school so it's gonna count for my Goodreads school because it's still reading and it's like this huge gigantic book completely filled with words and information about social psychology. I'm gonna keep it brief. I read it, did not give it a rating because it's for school but I really like that course. I thought it was quite interesting and that's all that I want to say about it. <laughs> Since I'm a mood reader I'm always kind of like doubting what I want to pick up. Am I in the mood for fantasy, contemporary, etc. And I wanted to pick up something easy and fun and different. So I read volumes one and two of Giant Days by John Allison and I've already read volume one a couple of years ago but I think it was Brit from Basically Brit who was rereading the series too and it made me feel kind of nostalgic. We follow a I think three person friend group of three girls who are like starting college and trying to figure out their life. I love the art style of volumes one and two but I think the artist changed from volume three on. So I like the art style less but I still love the story so I'm very excited to continue on with volume number three. I think I gave volumes one and two both four out of five stars because it's highly enjoyable and you just fly through them. So if you are in need of a comforting, fun, quick graphic novel series, Giant Days is the one for you. This next book is kind of triggering to me. It was really good though but just my anxiety really spiked whilst I read this and that is Don't Cry For Me by Daniel Black. I think the little blurb or like synopsis on top of this describes exactly what you're in for. So a black father makes amends with his gay son through letters written on his deathbed. deathbed in this wise and penetrating novel of empathy and forgiveness. So Jacob is an older man and like the synopsis said he is currently dying and whilst he's dying he writes all of these letters to his son, his gay son who he has treated very very poorly and they don't really speak anymore and it's kind of like trying to rekindle the relationship even though they don't really talk anymore. It's so interesting because you usually follow the perspective of this story from for instance then the gay son and now you read the story from the parent who did the harm to the child and it's basically the parent's backstory of how he kind of like became that way. I don't know how to express this well but it doesn't make you feel like Jacob's actions and sayings to his son are like straightened out or like he's making an excuse as to like why he acted to his son that way or why he said those things. It's just a very complicated novel 
and I find it so difficult to word my feelings. I think that Cindy read this book around the same time that I was currently reading it and she worded my opinion on this book so perfectly. What Cindy said on Goodreads is it's really easy to simplify people who are homophobic and carry sexist beliefs into one-dimensional antagonists and it's especially rare to get their perspectives in a book. Despite the heavy subject the book was a surprisingly easy and quick read because of the casual writing style. It makes me reflect on strict parents and the close-mindedness of older generations. What they've been through, how their upbringing and cultures influence their beliefs and their struggle in seeing life result in a way they hadn't dreamed for. It makes me think about how things like wanting happiness for yourself isn't something that an older generation isn't used to wanting because many older black people and POC were just focused on surviving. This describes my feelings towards this book exactly. So Cindy, thank you so much for wording it so perfectly. I am just not able to do it as well as you did, hence why I'm quoting you. <laughs> At the end though, when you're nearing to Jacob's death, I mean, that's not really a spoiler, but I was so triggered by how sad also his life story was that my anxiety just like completely popped up and I kind of had a mental breakdown after I finished reading this book so I would not recommend reading it when you're like at an anxious point in your life or if you're feeling really depressed I don't know this book will definitely help you in feeling better but I gave it I think a three and a half out of five stars I just have some complicated emotions whenever I think about or see this book but I think a lot of people will really appreciate it. Like I said, I went through a little bit of a mental breakdown after that book and just basically in general throughout this whole year, which is fun. <laughs> So I picked up a non-fiction book that I've had on my shelves for really quite a long time, which is Love for Imperfect Things, How to Accept Yourself in a World Striving for Perfection by Heinem Sunim. And in this guide, you kind of like go through eight chapters, each focusing on things not being as perfect as you want them to be regarding maybe like family, friendships, but also yourself, about healing, etc., etc. First few pages of each chapter are filled with just Heinem Sunim's look regarding the subject he gives some kind of examples and after those first couple of introductionary pages you get small pieces of insights and information maybe some nice mantras that you can write down and they feel really quite reassuring and especially for me an anxious person who is really struggling with being alone whenever I'm alone my mind just like goes on and on and it's not really nice. And reading his words on paper, they felt like someone was giving me a hug. I know my review doesn't give you a lot of feel about what you should expect whilst reading this book, but I think if you're struggling with perfectionism, with anxiety, with depression, with learning how to deal with imperfect things in life, then this is the one for you. It's really easy to read. And like I said, very comforting. Then a complete switch of genre. I read a book in a series that made me decide to completely DNF the whole series and to not continue on with it. <laughs> and that is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. That little thing I just said made it sound so bad, but it's definitely not. It just was not my cup of tea and I was just hoping to love it way more than I did. This is a YA inspired by Watson and Sherlock Holmes murder mystery type of story. You basically follow their descendants who are both attending a private school. You have Jamie Watson and you have Charlotte Holmes and the moment that they meet there's a tense energy between them and they seem more destined to be rivals than anything else. However, at their private school called Sharingford, a student dies under suspicious circumstances ripped straight from the most terrifying of the Sherlock Holmes stories and both Jamie and Charlotte seem to be the number one suspect for this murder while also trying to solve it. And the first 100 pages of this, oh my gosh, I loved it so much. It was so, so fast paced. I really love the boarding school setting and Jamie and Watson. Well, they seem to be rivals, but that's my big critique. It felt so kind of insta-lovey. Both of their families have been like rivals for so long and they're both like talking about being rivals, but then in this book, they are constantly so friendly to one another and constantly visiting each other, spending all the time together. So that felt kind of odd. And after those 100 pages, the plot was too fast moving for me, if that makes any sense. So, so sometimes I couldn't really like stay up to date with what was happening. It just lacked a little bit of the nuance and depth 
that I would have wanted. <laughs> the thing is, I do own the other two books in the quartet, but I have heard, I think this one is the sequel to A Study in Charlotte is actually worse than the first book. So I do not really want to put myself through that. And it was just enjoyable, but not really rememberable to me and just not worth my time, to be completely honest. <laughs> Ooh, talking about a book that's not worth anyone's time, here I have All These Bodies by Kendar Blake. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is maybe the worst book I have read until so far this year. The premise of this sounded so interesting and really gripped my attention. It seemed like a perfect book to me. It says, a gruesome killer, 16 bodies completely drained of blood, one impossible explanation. You got my attention when I hear that, okay? The only suspect in the bloodless murders is 15 year old Marie Catherine Hale, who was found at the scene of the crime covered in blood. But she refuses to confess to anyone except aspiring journalist, Michael Jensen, AKA the sheriff's son. Mary's time is running out, but she chose Michael for a reason, and his search for answers is her last chance to finally tell her story. The story that will call into question everything he knows. This is a thriller, murder mystery, paranormal book. I'm not great with genres, okay? Um, that takes place in 1958 in like Minnesota. I think. And I really loved that setting so much. So I was super interested in the first, I think like 50 pages because you get introduced to our murder suspect, this gruesome crime scene and a super young, I think he was like 16 years old, like wannabe reporter who is trying to kind of like solve this mystery. However, I don't think up until page 200, you get the most vague explanation for what is going on and i still don't completely know i think if i will tell it i will give away the complete clue of the story but this book is not worth your time so i'm just gonna say it if you don't want any spoilers click away in three two one it's a vampire story what if you read the synopsis you would not guess that at all and it's such an unsatisfying explanation to what has been going on there was so much potential and then the only vague description that you get is it was a vampire. You do not get the reason behind why this vampire killed all those people. The relationship between Marie and Michael felt so weird. They trusted each other kind of like from the second that they met each other without giving any explanation to the reader. So this book is just one big question mark. It just feels like a giant missed opportunity. Two, maybe one and a half out of five stars for this book because what was this? I don't know. Then I read three of TikTok's most popular romance novels and I won't be going like into detail with my reviews and opinions on these books because I made a whole dedicated reading vlog for them. So definitely go check out that video. I'm so proud of how it turned out and give it a like definitely go watch it. So for that video, I read The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I gave that one a four out of five stars. This is a laboratorium based romance with a fake dating trope, which if worked out properly, I really, really enjoy it. I loved the pairing of the super moody Dr. Carlson and Olive. And usually with like moody love interests, I kind of just like, I don't get why people like it, but with Carlson, I actually really did love it. <laughs> then I read Confess by Colleen Hoover because I feel like Colleen Hoover is the most talked about romance author and I just I don't get it this book it, it was maybe together with all of these bodies those were the two worst books that I have read until so far I give this one a two out of five stars but would consider lowering my rating because it was what is the synopsis for this one? I don't know. Our main interest meets up with this guy at his art studio. He makes paintings based on confessions that are being left behind by people on the street anonymously. And she basically falls for him, but it's not really what was like supposed to happen. It's not really their plan. So she kind of has to let go of Owen, the love interest. And it's just, where is the plot? What is the plot? Awkward main characters, side characters, weird romance. Just don't read it. Do not choose to spend your time reading this book unless you're a Colleen Hoover fan. But there are, in my opinion, way better romances out there than this one. And then my last book that I read for my TikTok romance video is Beach Read by Emily Henry. And I cannot wait to read more of her work. She could possibly become one of my favorite romance authors. In Beach Read, you follow two authors who are both dealing with writer's block and a lot of personal issues. They are also kind of each other's rivals and they find out that they are actually neighbors at like this beautiful 
lake. They both live in stunning lake houses and they kind of like make a deal and try to write each other's genre and whoever gets published first kind of like wins the bat and of course they fall in love. It dealt with so many complicated issues and Emily Henry did such a good job at it. I feel like I already want to like reread that book and mark all of my favorite quotes. This is in my opinion how every single romance novel should be written. And I'm just so excited to be reading You and Me on Vacation, probably somewhere in May. One of my lovely subscribers randomly gifted it to me, which is just so kind. And Emily Henry has also just published Book Lovers, which I've only read one of her books but I need all of them in my life. And then the last book that I read is It Only Happens in the Movies by Holly Bourne. This is one of her standalone novels and it deals with a girl who is kind of like obsessed with studying film. But in this book, she is kind of like writing an essay about certain tropes that happen, especially in like romance movies and how it's all super cliche and not really well worked out. And she kind of falls for a guy who fits perfectly into the movie cliche type love interest. It took me two months to finish this book. I did not love the first half. It was a very long buildup. She starts working at this new local cinema, she meets the love interest, and she starts to act in one of his films, and that takes about 160 pages to get to that point, which I felt was quite a long time. And after that, so like the second half, I love that way better. The plot was really moving forward. She was kind of like going through the struggles of dating as a teenager, choosing yourself instead of your kind of like not so happy relationship, how it's all super difficult. It felt just a little bit different than the usual YA contemporary romance and I really loved the ending of this book because of that. Definitely not as solid as the Spencer Club trilogy but the second half of the book really made up for it so I gave it a three and a half out of five stars and I'm very curious to read more of Holly Bourne's standalones and hopefully I will like them even more than this one. Okay, so those were the 13 books that I have read in the first four months of 2022. I'm really hoping to do more monthly wrap-ups, but the thing is, sometimes I'll only read two books in a month and I don't want to kind of like bore you out with a super short wrap-up, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments if you prefer more of like these bigger collective wrap-ups instead of a monthly one. And finally, do not forget to check out Book of the Month, follow the link and use my code Sabine to get your first book of the month book for just $9.99. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.